Uh, I refer to melancholia and the mood, of course, but uh, the mood uh, uh, embodies in, in a character, the character of Justine, the female lead role in the film. And melancholia is, of course, also uh, the planet that crashed into the Earth at the beginning and at the end of the film. Uh, Lars von Trier movies capable of staging the disintegration of the narrative language while never completely rejecting it are an experimental model of fracture and the potential crisis of acquired linguistic process right from the beginning. His first future film, The Element of Crime, is already characterized by a search for a model representation of the image that by abandoning the index of reality moves toward the negation of the same which paradoxically leads to experiencing a surplus of possibility of reality. And this model has been radicalized in the latest works by the Danish director. The process of deconstruction and refiguration carried out in Dogville is taken to an extreme in melancholia, where the fundamental act of suspended narrative ends with the end of history and obviously of all stories. The end of the narrative, explicitly posed at the end of a certain kind of cinema that even von Trier himself had made in the past, consequently leads to a figurative supremacy of image. The latter has become a vehicle for the materialization of a plurality of tension, symbolic and structural, temporal and sensorial. The image film melancholia, continuously tending towards the paradox of pictorial images that manifest itself is therefore an attempt to realize a major project in which the multiplicity of significant level, cinema's time, the film's time, and that of history are cancelled or summarized in an image that insists on the aporias or impasses of reality in order for, for it to emerge better. But what is the real level that the director wants to bring out, given that the basis of the film is characterized by a tendency toward a process of staging a filmic image that is an indication of blatant unreality? Let's take, let's take a step back and start from the premise that melancholia marks a break with the Danish director previous movies. In fact, instead of the uh, is of bringing the emotional intensity at the tension found in films like Breaking the Waves, Idiot Turn, or Dancer in the Dark to a climax, in this film, Von Trier has created a study of the feelings and reaction of people facing the prospect of catastrophe. The following paper aims to propose some possible ways of making comparison with melancholia, understood as a film that is a point of arrival for reflecting on the impact of images and the author filmmaking. In identifying some of this possibility path, I will make use of approaches that are seemingly antithetical, but which will eventually fall into place in a more general discussion, of course yet to be developed, developed on the status of the image in this film. In 1992, Francis Fukuyama published The End of History and The Last Man, in which he suggests that Western liberal democracy is the final step in the social cultural evolution of mankind and the definitive form of government. Underlying the author idea is a conception of history as a process of evolution, the individual event of which points to the end of history the latter be, being individuated precisely in a de de definitive form of government, could not undergo further progression, but would result in a kind of stasis. Fukuya Fukuyama hypothesis, which was conceived after the fall of communism and was certainly influenced by the idea of the possibility of the crisis of ideology, immediately gave rise to a widespread debate. For, for the purpose of this presentation, I will refer to the criticism made by Jacques Derrida. For the French philosopher, who in the turn referred to the state of Marxist ideology at, and the end of the communism in his book Spectre de Mars in 1993, Fukuyama's reflection is to be included in the general anxiety to proclaim the death of Marx and Marxism by proposing a kind of eschatology of Christian origin instead. In the same volume, Derrida also elaborated the concept of ontology. 
The term indicates a temporal, historical and ontological disjunct disjunction where the ap apparent immediacy of presence is replaced by the figure of a ghost, of ghost, neither present nor absent, neither dead nor alive. It is a state of simultaneously being and, and not being that can ultimately be traced back to a kind of nostalgia. Although, although Derrida term terminology arose in a context of sociopolitical analysis, it will, be soon, it will soon become a theoretical model for reading and in interpreting some of the as aspects intrinsic to late capitalism. In short, it is a model that was created as a response to the idea of, of end of history and to a development of equity, clarity and ideologically determined by Fukuyama. The ontology proposed a more evanescent dimension. It seemed to me that between the two poles, the end of history and the idea of the ghost, one can situate the work Melancholia implemented in its effort to be a tangible manifestation of a given historical moment. It is the manifestation of a failure at, and an end, the failure of human relationship and the end of the planet Earth. Structural, almost like an opera, the film consists in a prologue and two acts. The first act, Justine, follows the character of Justine during her wedding banquet. The bride progressively yells to depression, so much so that at the end of the party, her husband retreats from her. In the second part of the film, Claire, Justine's sister named Claire, in fact, takes care of her, seeing as she has fallen into a severe form of depression or melancholy. Meanwhile, the planet Melancholia is approaching the Earth, apparently following a safe orbit. However, the scientist's calculation turned out to be inaccurate, and at the end of the film, and at the beginning, we will see the impact of, of the two planets. In the structure of, of this diptych, I'll come back to the prologue shortly, from a mathematic point of view, we can identify a progression that goes from the particular to the general, whereas in the per first part, the director depicts, depicts the end of a story, in the second part, he shows the end of history. The first act story is a, of a familiar, is a staging of social, familiar and an economic relationship in society of adva advanced capitalism. It is no coincidence that the protagonists belong to a high social class of people dedicated to the profession disconnected from the concreteness of reality. <laughs> Justine worked with ideas as a copywriter for, for an ad advertising agency and during the, the banquet, she will come up with the slogan for the company campaign assigned by her, her, to her by her boss. And it's not by chance that this slogan is summon, summed up in one word, nothing. The rush to nowhere, to nowhere in a dimension of nihilistic annulment is the tangible figure of this first part of the film. The entire wedding banquet, no doubt meaningful of the film Festen by Thomas Winterberg, a director with whom Von Trier draft and signed the Dogma 94, Five manifesto reveals the intrinsic vacuity of social relationship and the ceremonies in which they are embodied. Marriage, as a contract between two parties, fails when one party discovers its contrived and commercial dimension. In a world governed by economic relations, which are, which are reflect onto every aspect of daily life, the awareness of this aspect that that tend towards the annihilation of the self lead the character of Justine into an abyss of melancholic depression. The wedding is given, is given as generative process of a possible story, the story of a couple, of course, that implicitly marks the conclusion of a journey, a stage of life and the opening of a new chapter, but one which is reckoned even before starting. From a mathematics and expressive point of view, the second part of the film leads what had been outlined previously to an extreme consequences, reaching a level of stylization and nice representation of a dance of death which the character enact. As noted earlier, the theme is always the death, death of an end, or rather the issue of, of nothing, of the nullification and the end of history. In this part of the film, the process of staging that I mentioned, I, mention, I mentioned at the beginning of this paper is outlined more emblematically, namely there is a transition to a type of static and pictorial Im image. In fact, in the film, Von Trier alternates between two ways of shooting, 
especially in the first part, he used a very movable camera, either handheld or placed on his shoulder or, or on the shoulder of the camera operator, which is con constantly focused on the characters. The camera follows, examines, investigates, and lingers on their face. He used a form of, of editing in which continuity is not provided and where special coordinates are shattered. The excitement of the wedding, with interpersonal tension that gradually become more and more explicit, vulgar, and obvious, calls for a treatment of the image that is able to restore the will to want to violate the intimacy of the characters. This will is dis desperately seeking a foothold, foothold in humanity. Von Trier is looking for mankind, but the characters in stage are, are its social function, which moreover have arrived at the final stage of inability to communicate. Therefore, the distinct segment presents the lack of communication of the character who, having become the epitome of a social function and ultimately a symbolization of the vice of the advanced capitalist society, are unable to act and define a function, functional context. And despite the paradox of a type of recovery that would make the character more intimately and concretely actor for change, they are powerless as their face, they, their own failure, no relationship, no communication, and no story, personal or private. Instead, the second part of the film offers a completely different visual dimension. The camera is often static, majestic in the fixity with which it proposes contemplative shot, with plenty of wide shot intending to render the space and places. So the film proceeds in the claim break from the first to second part to a stagnation of the shot of the filmic image that evokes the fixity of both, both painting and photography, where the latter is not intended as an index of the real, but rather a stagnation of time that opens up to a further level capable of conveying a ghostly, fantastic and or otherwise abstract dimension. What I want to emphasize here is that the use of this type of images arises from the need to introduce the temporal body of the film in its digesis, which develops chronologically and linearly, a character of suspension, of slowing down the flow of moments. This is not just the delay to delay the inevitable condemnation of the plan of death in its impact with, with melancholia, but to experience time to understand the time of the end and accept the finitude of being. After all, from this point of view, Melancholy is not a film that presents a catastrophe, but a film that depicts the expectation of catastrophe and explicitly denies us the vision of the same because, in a Heideggerian perspective, that is an act of supreme manifestation of the self that can be experienced only by oneself. The tension of an image that moves toward the static, or rather, in, is a, the objective manifestation of the director's intent to stage a crisis. Not so much a crisis of the image, but the crisis of cinematic narration. As if to say, as, as if to say that having reached this stage of film history, all that is left is to tell about the end of the narrative. And in order to do that, that we need stories, but one made up of images that hypostasize the feeling of the end. The melancholy of the title, which is also the planet that will bring the end, an end to Earth, to life and so the, to the story, is an awareness end, most of all, is, is the ghost of that consciousness. Melancholy is therefore also the inclination that identify a particular performance, the fixed image or so it seems, the pictorial dimension, the photographic reference, the citation, the correlative objective of expressing one's impossibility of belonging to past that is reflected in the present, alive and not alive, present and absent. Thus, melancholy is the feeling of being clearly aware of no longer being able to make any sense of history. It is the end of history, while still feeling nostalgia for it. The search for the past is clearly marked by the character of Justine, 
when in a moment of despair and depression in the library of the castle, where her, her wedding reception takes place, she substitutes some reproduction of te contemporary art with others that refers to modern art. The presence of the ghost in this act of substitution is made concrete. The past, with its breadth of, and dimension full of meaning and potential narrative, replaces the present, experienced by the, by the subject as temporality devoid of meaning and content. In the present, story cannot be told, or even worse, there can be no stories. Each generating function of the narrative move movement is frozen, thus made impossible. Yet there remains the desire to create a movement that disengages the, character from the characters from the present to free them from the bondage of the real and the extant. And this movement brings the subject to her expectation of the past. The latter is the ghostly place time in which the subject can once again experience the meaning of, of her own life and by extension of the collective existence that is embodying the tension of history, understood as generating propulsion toward an ultimate end. The aforementioned act of the substitution allow us to reach the conclusion of the intervention. Since the evocation of painting of the past through the work of masters such as Bosch, Bruegel, Caravaggio and Millais refer not so much or rather not only to the dimension of the pictorial treatment that we find in the second part of the film as the prologue of the same. The prologue, which lasts about eight minutes and is accompanied by the overture of Wagner, Tristan Unisold, is in its dazzling beauty could be the, be the work in and of itself if it weren't just a summary introduction to the film themes, raising them to a level of rarefaction to find meaning precisely in an abstra abstract dimension of the shot. In the 16th shot that negate the status of cinematic realism and rather concern both painting and photography, we find the essence of the film character and, the and themes. Unable to show you the entire sequence due to such short time, I proposed a rapid succession of individual shots which are full of intertextual references and allusion to other work, films and themes. In its in, uh, it is intent that we find the director's desire to set out and achieve a ghostly image, simultaneously endowed with present and absence. Uh, it is an image suspended between the presence of the concrete figurative given and the absence of, the po of a possibility of concretely filmic existence. It is an image which, in moving away from cinema, looks to painting and photography, both as a reference model and as the form, and, uh, as the form that it takes, without being able to embody it. The suspension of this stage is the ghost, that, that of the past which the sterility of the present cannot open up to the future, obliterated by the end of history. And therefore, the ghost is also the nostalgia for the filmic image, image that does not have its own ontological essence and therefore cannot tell anything, not only because there are no more stories to tell, but because its very, sus its very suspension eliminates the condemnation of being suspended between expressive form that generate ghosts and not stories. Uh, I skip through. Uh, in conclusion, I particularly wish to mention the painting Antor in the Snow by Bruegel the Elder, which appeared twice in the film, both in the prologue and the segment entitled Justine. This is certainly a tribute to Tarkovsky, would use the painting both Solaris and uh, the Mirror, but in my opinion, is also the index of a possible ulterior interpretation of the film. If mankind, as well as men of the painting, is but a small powerless pawn in, at the mercy of events, then all efforts, all fear, and all desire disintegrated in front, in, and all desire disintegrate in front of inevitability of history. What remains is a, what remains is an image which soon dissolves into black. And none, and none of our effort to preserve it are worth, it are worth anything. The ghost is with us, but without, but without us, it consumes itself and cannot outlive, outlive us. Thank you.